one simple rule is whoever is giving advice on stocks or mf just stay away from them but <laughs> lalit runs the largest brokerage platform in the country and he's saying which is important yeah and see the trading is a very very serious stuff not meant for like 90% of the folks and one best thing about starting early is that you can make mistakes and you will not go broke yeah right you can't do those kind of mistakes let's say at 40 or 50 right lot is happening my industry yeah. is no longer about bangalore or yeah. delhi mumbai last year up grew by 19% <laughs> and that's you know just a mind boggling level of growth i don't know anybody who knows how to time the market markets think of it like if you are an engineer you are there is a system there are the like millions of inputs and lot of these inputs which are human beings are irrational mm. lot of the times yeah. how can you predict the system <laughs> all right lalit welcome looking forward to this conversation i think i had the pleasure of knowing you for last uh, Seven eight years, and uh, it was great to collaborate with you also in the early days of Guru. What was the thought process? What convinced you that building a company for making investing easy for people is something you know which there is a potential large market, or were you even thinking of large market, or you're more focused on just building a you know differentiated product? No, large market was definitely a big focus area. So when you do your second startup, there is some. rationality along with passion right yeah. and and the way we looked at it is like and we discussed a lot in our early days right that uh india as a country will continue growing like we are probably at the best in the best times of our kind of journey and then uh and then india is a very young country young folks the wealth of uh, uh of uh these folks will continue growing and like <clears throat> and then we have this unique opportunity to build something for 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 this uh for this growing market uh secondly uh again practically speaking like uh, if you look at the value generated in india the profit pools and the market caps in india financial services is the largest and then uh, you so coming from lipkart then you also look at numbers okay 1.4 billion people but let's say 300 400 million middle class people and how many are actually uh, have access to good quality high quality financial services mm-hmm. like i remember when we started thinking about mutual funds there were like 20 million uh, investors in the entire country which did not make sense right yeah so these were kind of uh, thought process at that time and what are the numbers now how many people are now investing in mutual funds So, uh, like, I think forty uh, million plus forty-five million people. 40 so, million. last uh, five six years has doubled. I'm pretty sure grow is playing its part also in making a lot of people probably come to market for the first time. Do you track like you know how many people start their investment journey with grow? Yeah. So, uh, approximately sixty percent, sixty to sixty-five percent of our customers are first-time folks. They start journey with us, mm-hmm. but then now. when we started it was little higher like 65% and now it's around 60% because now lot more mature folks have also started coming in like mm-hmm. because other products they don't like and then they move to bro so let's a little bit i want to just touch upon the uh, the market size and the profit pool in financial services so let's just talk about you know from the i think how were you look at it whether in terms of listed companies you know total market cap of financial services companies or total profit pool what are the macro numbers you know which uh, Uh, to support this idea that you know there's a lot of value creation in india is happening in this category so yeah so before market cap and profit pools and so on just look at the impact of financial services mm-hmm. now in your daily life right <clears throat> uh, so one aspect is money part which is like just spending like money is just to spend but then the moment and that is how we were before like you know when we were like hunter gatherers like you know it's like very transactional life but then the moment you start thinking about future then you start saving so wealth comes into picture and then uh, if you want to grow but you don't have capital you take credit so then credit comes credit future growth and then you protect yourself that's insurance and so on right so and now the the beauty is that everybody needs this like so that's what we call right oti kapla makan and then financial services it's like 
equivalent like education entered everywhere you need financial services so you touch everybody's life in any of the uh, everybody's uh, you touch everybody in any of these aspects and then of course if you are generating value to fair then revenues profits and market and then then you come to the market caps let's say in uh, in in india i think financial services would be i don't maybe 30% of the market cap maybe i'll i can we can check yeah. but that that would be like zari in the 30 to 40% range from last yeah. year and it high. keeps uh, kind of right now banks and all things are kind of uh, uh, are kind of uh, under uh, like you know they have not done well but I think it's yeah, it's thirty to forty percent. You can. I think point you're making is that um, these financial services are integral to quality of life. Yeah, wealth uh, gives you resources. You have you know some security about a future. It generates income also, right? And similarly, credit allows you to, uh, you know, either start a business or even personal life. And you can yeah. afford products today and pay yeah. for it over a period of time. And insurance, you know, bad things happen. Bad things you know, happen, yeah. and you yeah. risk protection. So, and hence. Because the universal appeal of these products, yeah, translate into you know, yeah value things. value generation translate into market caps. Yeah, correct, 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 yeah. yeah. So early, just just let's zoom into first twelve months of grow. What yeah. were you? I remember you know, uh, I think meeting you quite regularly during yeah. those days, probably every few months. Yeah, and I think, I mean, it's been six seven years now, but my recollection, a lot of discussion were about either product features or grow, uh-huh. yeah, how to grow. Yeah, so. What what were you focused on you and all your co-founders in the first twelve to eighteen months? What was most important for you in those days? So far, so uh, so we were very clear that you know if we don't build the right product for the customers, if we understand the customer really well, then everything is else is secondary. Like that is the most important thing. So we did not worry about any. So in general, like you know, what is HR funding? Mm-hmm. Funding we were lucky, right? You know, we we got some capital, but. all the other aspects of the business are secondary even making money was like secondary first build something which customers really really want and they love so i think we did not do anything else so even office space we did not we just borrowed office from friends and so on right and like just focused on one thing no so i mean the spirit of that is you know music to my ears i think you probably recall like you using this phrase product is marketing you know that is yeah. my way of saying is product is that important and there are many ways to i think build startups and people prefer different things but my preferred way would be you build a product so awesome that you know customers really fall in love with the product yes and so with your intention of building great product what are things you were doing on a daily basis you know uh, also the team culture and the skill set like how how do you actually make progress towards building a great yeah product? see one thing was sure like so you can of course talk to customers interview and sometimes i mean we also like uh we also used to go when before the movie starts people are free right in a cinema hall so you'll go there and you get an opportunity to talk to people and so on but they, those kinds are fine but i think ultimate insights come only when you build something like you know poc or something and then you uh and then you launch it and then ca- see the expression of people like how are they how are they actually kind of reacting uh not by asking them or if you ask them oh, do you like this product and they will of course say yes and so on but that is not that's not that kind of valuable but if let's say if customers love that they continue using that they start talking about it to their friends which is the biggest like biggest kind of thing then something something happens and one thing uh, what uh, what i think again that sense of productivity right a lot of people think that okay i will talk to 10 customers and then this is my good work like i i'll talk to 50 customers this is my good work but it doesn't happen like this the n- amount of input that you put in versus the output there is no correlation mm-hmm. sometimes you will just get one insight mm-hmm. and then you build over it and then there's like massive out- output so it's very non linear in that way and that's how like we wasted a lot of time by the way like you know uh, i mean we wasted like i think we wasted around a year mm-hmm. easily yeah <laughs> no but that wasted looks like in retrospect would you if you do this all over again will you still invest that time or you will do it? i think so see uh, i think um, again uh, i I, th- i think i should correct myself probably it did not waste but it built our culture it built our understanding of the customer it was not very productive from the sense of shipping and so on but then there's this story i tell to my team also like trees that grow slow right they are very strong yeah i i was reading in this book by morgan housel which is like how same as ever same as ever yeah there's a story there where 
if a tree uh, grows small this much stronger right so i think that slow slowness at that time the first one year i think that made our company very very strong our bonding also very strong yeah. and we saw like sometimes you just show up right you get up in the morning come and there is like mm-hmm. nothing to do but then in the low time is what the bonds are also built between co-founders between the net team members no yeah, absolutely you know that um, surviving some kind of adversity together yes definitely you know yeah uh increases cohesion as among the group i think it's a yeah i also think the you know, group of people becomes a great team when there were few both shared successes and shared yes. failures yes. and failures sometimes leads to teams dissipating but the teams that figure out how to ride that out and rally each other and survive then the then you have all these war stories and you feel like you know we can yeah. come out of that i mean cure for all same thing happened during pandemic you know it was like brutal 18 months you know with three round of business you know, <laughs> shutting down three yeah. times in a row but the core group pretty much stayed intact and now when I mean, their confidence you know sky high they really yeah. think ab to kuch bhi kar sakte hain <laughs> true and the part of what you are also alluding to is that in the early stage probably better do we have less resources what yes. the companies are raising a lot of money yeah. and on the then curefoot made some of those mistakes they raised a lot of money in first few years and of course you know we also yeah. burnt a lot of those money trying to all kind of experiments and products so i think a little bit that starvation you know going back to a tree analogy like yeah. the trees are growing the year of less rainfall etc their their roots are not deep yeah 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 on the this building great product you know uh, any metrics you focus particularly on how like with how do you know that my product is yeah. better or and it's also not i'm guessing you're not comparing with the other people out there you have yeah. for some absolute benchmark yeah right yeah now. Yeah so everybody is playing different game so one mistake is like always comparing in at least in early stages if you start comparing with product you with somebody else then you start playing their game which is the one big mistake but looking quantitatively like there are four things i think which i try to look at one is uh the if your product is good then acquisition should be very very low like if you are spending lot of money in acquiring customer that means there is some gap because if product is good then people will start talking about it and then acquisition will come down second is very important retention mm-hmm. if it is very low retention pro- uh, product then the utility of your product is very low retention is like what i mean by that is like if a customer cam- came in january can they stay till december or next december and like yeah. 24 months 36 months and so on the better the longer it is the better it is third thing is engagement like now this is bit kind of uh like some people might not agree uh, but engagement is important which is like how often do people need you right mm-hmm. how important are you in their lives right and lastly like how much do they love you right how much like do they talk about so love is not like if you again if you ask somebody okay do you love like the product and they will of course say yes because they want to be good to uh, in india everybody is so good so nice they will like nobody will kind of hurt you yeah. so uh, love is like which comes very very loudly like you know so for example if i i love something then i talk about it to all the folks right yeah. and and so on so if if i think about all the products that i use like they are all recommended by somebody like my shoes this ring and yeah. like you know everything basically right so that's the customer love this is let's just say this four things i i, I agree with all of them and this so for some things it's so simple to state but so difficult to put in practice right so you said first is if people like your product at some point the customer acquisition cost should start to go down yes if you see a trajectory that is not staying constant that means this you're kind of forcing you're yeah. spending a lot of money on all these paid channels somehow getting them in the door yeah. right so that retention even if you force them through the door and they leave after 6 months there's a leaky yeah. pocket you know yeah. classical problem in most you know people who try to force artificial growth but only yeah. the bucket is always empty no matter how much yeah you're yeah pouring from the top engagement is again you know okay so i'm aware of grow let's say for example or in our case cult but am i using it regularly like you know yeah. uh, buying stocks or going to gym regularly or versus you know i just have the membership or i signed up for account but no engagement and uh, yeah customer love is also other thing you know which is it's like one of those thing you know it when it's there, yeah right? yeah you know yeah people can't stop talking about yeah. it yeah okay great framework agree wholeheartedly but what does it take to build this i mean so these like most startups will die on one of these three yeah. more things right it's so hard but the problem is it's very hard like it's no. so in the hindsight now i can tell you how we built it but even today if i build a new product i think 
it will not be a simple framework for me it will mm-hmm. so for example in grow also we are launching lot of products not everything worked yeah. and we know this framework like we know this four things you know this yeah. should work but then also we fail right so it's it's very hard right uh, i don't know uh, i think feeling like there's a feeling right that comes yeah. so you, this will work right no but see, the, this framework also this is capturing the output metric in some ways you can yeah. measure all this but from input point of how do you set it right yeah. let's say today you are starting a, even within grow new product what input conditions and what culture mm-hmm. will give you a better chance of arriving at yeah. you know better yeah numbers so the so I'll, so there are few frameworks that again not very full full frameworks one is which is which is the probability of success is very high which is uh being a user yourself like so for example uh, investing was relatively easy for us because we were the users like very very power users today even today i use like grow like maybe 1 to 2 hours a day mm. because i am power user of the product so uh, so that is one framework you really feel the need mm. and at least you are the customer at least one customer you have got right so a b2c otherwise b2c products are very hard to build so you have at least one thing that there's one customer second is there are some products where customers are very vocal mm. like in in grow framework also let we might have like 10 15 let we might have 15 products but there are like three or four products where we don't need to decide the road map mm-hmm. customers like shout like you know that we need this yeah. and then there is no like there is no question about it uh, there is what uh, th- third is like stampede creation like you know stampede creation is like if you build something and it was just so much in demand that there is literally stampede that happens like uh queue out for apple stores yeah uh they have done phenomenal uh, kind of brand building and so on but i think even new products sometimes create that kind of uh that kind of stampede uh st- fourth one is relatively easier when you are large company when you have a lot of data and you can start looking at the click stream data and see what are customers looking for sometimes we also do like uh 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 we also so uh one one thing we that we do is that uh, let's say we launch a product at a very small scale and let's say remove it for some time and then then see what is the real your utility of that how much one survey also we used to do which was called a, a disappointed survey so let's say i ask customer if i if i remove this product how disappointed will you be mm-hmm. and then they should say very disappointed a lot many of them should say that they will be very disappointed otherwise it's it's not a high utility for the customers a yeah, cool all all very relevant frameworks and mental models for people to potentially think about i think as you go back to this one of um, just being a power reason for a b2c i mean also again able to personally relate i think in my mentor days i used to buy so much <laughs> clothes and shoes i had I'm not even kidding a couple of hundred pair of shoes by the time i was done my my interest stint and similarly i mean i i love fitness i mean <laughs> these days i work out less at cult but i work out every day yeah. that may you know, have able to relate to i think that's probably at least for b2c companies uh, founders should think about you know do you have a genuine passion for what you are building yeah other i will second hand that you know trying to service a metric but you have no personal you yeah. know, relatability i mean ankit was our common friend and was you know um, co-founder at um, curefit earlier you know he has a genuine passion for food and now you know the yeah. externalized cure foods and he's doing really well because he really like you know yeah, yeah. Like, so i think that's probably one signal both among the founders as well as the product managers the people who are engineers yeah, who yeah. want to work on this like if they're disconnected then probably otherwise it's yeah. very tough to build magic like if if you're not passionate about right, especially in b2c I, i don't have any expertise in b2b but at least in b2c i think passion is very very important i think b2b also i feel there's different type of passion because it does require a lot of selling So you have to enjoy meeting people, and not everyone enjoys, right? Yeah. Like I work for two enterprise software companies in my early days in uh, Silicon Valley, and I did not like at that time, at least, you know, just going out doing all these product demos <laughs> and <laughs> waiting for the purchase order, <laughs> the fax machine, literally, right? Didn't like it, you know. And so th- my product is not very well suited to build enterprise, you know, company, at least, you know, at that time. Um, so a little bit of self awareness, right? You know, what do you really like? Yeah. Probably because today. So now, you know, last few years we looked at, you know, there was the crypto trend, and then there was metaverse, and now AI. But they all require certain type of people with certain, you know, passion and interest. Yeah, like yeah. AI is 
at the score is very technical. Yeah. If you don't like computer science, don't like going too deep into it, keep building super physical solution. Right? So is that um, something you look for the initial teams that, you know, let's say for a new initiative grow? Yeah. How will you build up? What in your mind? Yeah. What's the ideal team to give best possible shot to a new product? Um, uh, best possible shot to give a new... For... Uh, Best possible shot for new products to improve the chance of success. Success, so, uh, which yeah. kind of people you'll want to work on a new initiative? Oh, people, yeah. So uh, uh, when we uh, so long time back, I think you also reviewed that document that we created, which is called Grow Code. Mm. And uh, in that Grow Code, there are ten commandments. Yeah, commandments are like very serious thing. Like these are non-negotiable religious stuff, yeah. right? And uh, there's one commandment which is like you need to be power user of your product. Mm. Right. And uh, so in general, if you're not passionate about what Grow is doing, then I think it's very, very difficult for somebody to kind of survive or grow. And then there are also some people who are very good with zero to one products mm-hmm. and some people who are very good in scaling. And uh, and interestingly, the, nat- the natures are very different. So mm-hmm. it's very tough for uh, a scale person to do like zero to one because they feel very loss of like productivity loss, right? Because they are used to impact like millions of folks and then you are talking to one person. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's one thing that kind of has worked recently for us, like figuring out people who are really good at figuring out. So founder personality is very good at zero to one kind of thing. Uh, and then they need to learn scale. But if you hire, let's say, a very senior person from, let's say, Flipkart who has done like millions uh, and so on. And then they come and see, oh, we are building this product with like four engineers. And then I'm used to like leading, let's say, 100 engineers. It's yeah. very, very tough. Right. So you're mindful of uh, seeing the propensity where someone is likely to both passion for, you know, what you're going to build yeah. as well as scale. Uh, scale like comfortable with not having any scale and just doing yes, yes. working a few engineers few customers you know which is which is what makes like a zero to one that much more painful because you really have no big fulfillment or you know big numbers to feel yes feel feel good about just talk more about your grow code so i know i mean along with the product i think i've been in the past conversation i've noticed that you really almost have you have tried to design along with you know co-founder certain type of culture, yeah. And Grow Code is you know one enabler for that. A little more of a thought process about Grow Code, how it came to be, and also what has it done for the company so far. Sure. No. So for, uh, before that, I mean, I want, want to thank you for one uh, specific line that you told many years back, right? Which still is kind of embedded, which was like, so we are product builders, but when we start. Thinking about the organization, organization is our product, not the app or not the website, right? Which was very powerful. And then, like, we wanted to build an org, like, which is very, very long lasting, which is like enduring org, very high competitive advantage and so on. And and we started with this value of customer obsession, customer focus. And we also seen how when orgs kind of grow very large, these kind of, uh, these uh, these what 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 the ultimate purpose that you start with they kind of try to uh, they start diluting because mm. kind of you know your culture kind of gets uh, diluted and so on so we thought okay let's write it down mm-hmm. what we want and this is like our like you know how why why do religions survive so long because they have set of you know commandments they have set of rituals and and so on and we thought let's do that mm. so many years back like maybe six uh, six years back or we wrote a we we wrote a doc which is like grow code. Mm. Co- grow code is a specific way in which grow works. Yeah. So we have ten commandments there. We have our value system there. We have, you know, how to hire people, how to kind of you know, grow people and all those kind of things. Very kind of uh, objectively written. Yeah. And is this document evolving? Like have you gone back in a bit? Yes, a bit. So uh, some changes happened, but the core still remains. Maybe. We got a bit better in getting like, you know, I, so I remember the first version who had like, you know, this thing where, okay, Grow wants to make, uh, what was that, uh, financial, financial services simple. And then I remember you had to put a comment and this is not looking like a very, very large purpose. And then, and we did not do anything then, but after a few years, we realized, oh, our purpose is to empower people mm-hmm. by making financial services simple, delightful and transparent. So the now the end is actually something else mm-hmm. that was a means right making financial services simple and transparent mm-hmm. is a means but ultimately the objective is to empower people yeah. Yeah. right oh that's amazing and i want to just you know, add to it i'm personally I mean, 
you're using the phrase grow code i use the phrase word constitution but the same thing you know the like like you borrowed from religion right? so all countries have a constitution which basically how is this country going to function what are the fundamental things we believe in mm-hmm. and what is our way of operating so i think it's a very i mean i have tried to the last seven it is whichever company i'm part of let's try to write a key version of constitution and almost thinking like constitution also evolve you can literally have amendments you know yeah, yeah. as the need uh, Yeah. changes so i think you know a lot of startups can benefit from that uh, i mean this at some level if it doesn't matter you know what structure one uses but as whatever fundamental you know guiding principles uh, core values policies rituals you can think of which is going to help translate your vague vision into something concrete that other people can also read and try yeah. to you know abide by that would i think help you know that can play a big role i hope a lot of startups you know if you listen to this think about What is the current constitution? If there's our code, if there isn't one, they try to write. Yeah, right. in fact, we are planning to open source. Like we'll probably make it open. So Amazing. Open source to employees or all customers? To every, uh, employees, of course, everybody has access to it. But everybody else also, if they want to, if they want to, kind of. Now we also want to kind of. So a lot of start, like a lot of entrepreneurs also come mm-hmm. for help and so on. Maybe if it. helps in some some way then so be it like that's amazing there's okay, nothing that's secret there yeah next level revolution and good companies you know if you can everyone can read you know the principles that you know google lives by or amazon lives by i think it's uh, in some ways get some level of transparency also everybody knows that yes and sometimes very difficult to live up to you know i don't know google's don't do evil i mean how relevant <laughs> that is <laughs> but they tried for a long period of time and there are many other principles you know about uh, generally transparency and empowerment and so on i think so It's good to be good, good to be transparent about these things. Speaking of you know open sourcing and opening, uh, just sharing this aspect with the larger ecosystem. So the broader grow ecosystem is humongous. I mean, you guys are now the largest online brokerage company in the country. I think you said also largest distributor distributor of mutual fund in the country. All that is just seven year time frame, which is pretty insane. Eight know? years now. <laughs> Eight years. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, you know in less than ten years, getting from basically nothing a startup with, I think your seed funding, if I'm not mistaken, was something of five six crores, like very small amount of money, and from there in eight years, you know, so obviously you and your co-founders must feel great about being there. But now, um, how do you look at you know this is a larger you know uh, user base that kind of relies on grow for their you know, empowerment. through access to all these financial services how do you think about as a uh, custodian for that large yeah. user base and doing something about you know continue improve yeah. their life and enable access to yeah our products yeah so see for us like grow will continue growing if our customers are growing yeah. and we think from three perspective what we talked about wealth like wealth of people should grow so today grow overall like there would be around 20 billion dollar worth of wealth managed on grow which is like uh quite decent yeah. like you know and that would continue growing so people would continue building wealth and wealth brings lot of independence to people lot of decisions that they can take you know better decisions that they can take then there is credit which is relatively much smaller for us but it's a very long run way i think the credit credit penetration in india is is low and uh, and uh, lastly protection which is like insurance which is a bit far away but again like uh maybe uh that's another impact that would create mm-hmm. so if people's financial services are like uh well sorted they will be able to grow faster and they will kind of have a meaningful kind of what are the macro numbers in india how many people overall either you know buy stocks buy mutual funds how is that number growing year over year so 2016 something happened mm mm-hmm. and we were happened obviously <laughs> <laughs> we were lucky you know grow of course like we leverage the kind of tailwinds uh, uh and uh, we were very lucky uh, but there are few things that happened which kind of really really helped the entire ecosystem where number of stock investors grew many fold uh mutual funds grew uh, aum grew everything like you know and uh, few so it's also very kind of difficult to find exact reasons but mm-hmm. one few things are very clear what one thing that happened was this so called digital public infrastructure mm-hmm. came into yeah. and that is like mix of lot of things actually so for example before grow before um kyc like you know mm-hmm. 
people had to actually sign on forms yeah i opened my dmat account like 20 years back uh, in one of the leading uh, kind of banks at that time and it was very painful process mm-hmm. but then came uh, aadhar digital locker ek so bunch of things that happened then upi came mm-hmm. so transactions became very very seamless and everything then uh, uh, a lot of this for- so then internet kind of so i my first start of failed because you're building a streaming platform and there is no bandwidth mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like very stupid now if you think mm-hmm. but now that is not a problem people are used to shopping on flipkart people are paying through upi and so on so i don't feel very uncomfortable in let's say buying or doing an sip of let's say 15000 rupees mm-hmm. right or 10000 rupees so these are the kind of big changes that happen yeah. but then if you look at the secular trends that like india has been growing for like decades now yeah. like we have been compounding like 6% for like 5 to 7 like you know it yeah. changes but no other con- com- country compounds today at this this rate right so overall i think in the india stack impact it's probably very quite pervasive and uh, i don't want to say under appreciated because i think these days you know everyone also talks about it but probably you know maybe at a headline level is very clear but at grassroots level you know really what it is enabling for financial inclusion and access to financial services is probably still maybe not very widely yeah, known it's, it's tough for us to realize that yeah. and especially for us who are sitting here like you know in bangalore which is a bubble yeah but then when we travel to like smaller cities meet lot of folks and see the changes happening around yeah. it's like then you get the feel then you get the impact right, right. then you feel the impact yeah. uh, do you i mean i want to go back to that if you know the numbers of top of mind you approximately like just when the country of 1.4 billion people today how many people you know are participating in the public market you know yeah. so retail investors uh, so d- there are a lot of dmat accounts there are 100 million plus dmat accounts but that's like people open and then the active investors traders in last let's say 12 months would be around 35 million to 40 yeah. million uh, mutual fund numbers again there are folios which is like a available publicly available but there are a lot more but then unique investors uh would be around uh, 40 million got it and this is across people who are buying direct stocks or buying some kind of mutual fund yes uh including debt funds yes got it so this is a total you would say approximately let's say round number 40 million annual growth in this number 8 10% uh, it's again very very uh there have been years when uh the numbers don't so like last year for example the number of active in active stock investors actually was de growing for like 6 months mm. and then this last few months has been like again right so we came down to i think around 32 mil, 31 32 million mm. from 36 37 so then then again now it's kind of rising again so there's bit kind of uh, volatility there in short term but in long term like again that's why like i don't remember a lot of these macro numbers because i have kind of train myself to not look at macro numbers yes. because sometimes they get very distracting in short term like you know and that's why like if even if you're looking at macro numbers look at like 10 year numbers or 20 year numbers because our industry is like that like you know be it wealth be it credit be it if, if, like it's all very kind of in short term it you can make wrong decisions yes. if kind of you have to look at so but okay let's look at in the very long term macro what is a comparable from other you know developed uh, markets let's say in us what percentage of population would own stocks on mutual fund uh very high i don't remember the latest numbers so i will even look at i will probably fact check and you know put it as a caption but i'm guessing at this point i don't know but must be i think 25 30% no more is. than that or 50% plus so that's out of 400 million people nearly you know in nordic countries it is 100% <laughs> wow Yeah. So, which is great, you know. So, if you look at you know very long term, I mean, we have yeah. we're saying we're at three percent today of the population. Yeah. It just you know even getting yeah. to ten percent, fifteen, twenty percent is this yeah. Amazing. That that's why I think that's that's all. Like I keep telling, which is like we for about numbers, we don't need to worry about. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I think in this, I mean, of course, it's true for grow and financial inclusion, but almost true for pretty much any industry in India. If you manage to get to a some penetration let's say you know i mean i'll leave a fitness example also 
and today we are the you know by far largest fitness company but fitness penetration in india is 6 million fitness users which is uh, point what kitna 0.4% mm. us set number is 20% Yeah. So good thing is, and you can see that you know, very twenty thirty year, you know, growth runway ahead of you. Yeah. You only get to five percent penetration. This ten is growth in market. Yeah. Which is obviously, you know, people in India will work out. You know, everybody wants good health. I know you are a big health fanatic. You know, last few years, and maybe we'll come back to that later. But yeah, I think you know, we can see that. So it's it's I think almost applies to nearly any India. That's the beauty of it. It's six seven percent compounding that we are seeing in GDP, and but most consumer in. Uh, Industry are growing almost between ten to fifteen percent. Kegar and the yeah. demand inside. Yeah. Um, just uh, so in the early days, you know, a lot of your focus was targeting those first time investors, and I think the picture, you know, I think we discussed also the first time investors. Somebody is a Flipkart engineer who is probably twenty five year old, two three into yeah. job, starting a surplus income. So let's extrapolate from there. The people who are in their twenties. how should they think about you know if they are not participating in the market what is the mental model that they should think about you know you've read morgan yeah. housel books right he talks about this in both of his books so what is your translation to when you're talking to somebody in 20 so think about their financial health from a you know long term point of view yeah there's so this uh, i've spoken it many times but uh, one thing is that uh, starting early is very very important like it's like it's like swimming like you can read a lot of books and you can do it, but ultimately you will have to do something and one best thing about starting early is that you can make mistakes mm-hmm. and you will not go broke yeah right you can't do those kind of mistakes let's say at 40 or mm-hmm. 50 right so so that is very important uh, second thing is like investing or in general being aware about money management finance management is i think it builds us as like you know our personality also like we we get a different perspective in life and uh, and then also what happens is typically so for example grow customers are very prudent mm. very very smart so recently there was this start about how few people how d- did nominee for mm. and gross percentage was 2x of that and so on and i think it's because because they get exposed to like so many things they they become very responsible they become very prudent and also uh then you start reading a lot mm. right and then you get again your mental model like you know the frame of life kind of keeps getting added and maturity comes and so on i think that's very important so more i think i have i started in as a, i started investing when i was in college and i think i might have made some money but more than that i think how it helped me, so it helped me understand business like i have, i don't have an mba mm. but how do i know about business so much because i read so much and i like you know investing i mean investing has taught me that as a person also like you know uh, you get you become curious because acha this company is doing this so you want to know fitness let's say you want to understand it okay where is where how is the trend of people going and then you understand psychology and you understand like you even go to concepts like physics and you mm-hmm. kind of so that's like the beauty of uh, all of it i think Yeah, both Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are like um, uh, Charlie Munger unfortunately died, but voracious readers, right? You know, Munger. yeah. Munger, I have read that he would read almost six to eight hours every day across all disciplines, yeah. including <laughs> physics and biology, and yeah, everything. Yeah. And somewhere it helped him from his his perspective. But coming back to again, you know, this uh, the the younger people. I mean, one is okay. Starting early, you have the benefit of compounding. You know, whatever you do, yeah, you can you know compound for thirty, forty years. but one thing you don't have any younger in is patience you know i also got into investing in my early 20s but day trading <laughs> i actually talked to nidhi also about this you know i was day trading like mad and just you know because you feel like you know see historically in you know, stock markets give you 10% return over a very annual return over a very long period but when you are day trading you know stock price obviously fluctuates yeah. and you may see 10% happen over one week and you feel you know you brag what you can correct also 10% yeah so what's a like, that patience you know i buy and hold for 3 years you know how that's very tough ask for someone in their early years no i think um, it's still like a small price to pay to learn patience right. in early years uh i'm sure you did day trading when then but now i i mean i'm sure that would have made you better like have more patient patience now right i think 
it's like journey of life but uh uh patience is very important i think i don't know how to get that patience i <laughs> but uh, market teaches you to some extent yeah maybe i'll just say i think for the younger folks listening to is just you know i mean your lalit runs the largest brokerage platform in the country and he's saying patience is important yeah Take it seriously and i agree I mean, 100% you know it's a i mean for me that day trading was so traumatic you know i eventually i just stopped investing for a long period of time and eventually yeah. i eased back my salary to you know just very conservative mutual funds yeah and increasing like my whole investment strategy is changing so i just want to hold for a very long period yeah. of time yeah. i don't know that you know plus i'm obviously not an investment professional i don't have insider knowledge or able to analyze a particular industry so but i know that you know long term hold is you know create most value for most people i think going back to again uh baksha hathe from what i understand my number is slightly off but 80% of money they've ever made is from 10 stocks something like yeah, that yeah yeah like yeah it's very high concentration yeah well see they, uh, so there is nothing bad in day trading and stuff the problem is that people get into it without understanding what it is mm. right day trading is a very very serious stuff and not uh, not meant for like 90% of the folks yeah. options futures like they are not meant for most of the folks for most of the folks what is best is like invest in index funds or some mutual funds or if you can understand businesses if you let's say if you understand an industry then invest in stocks like for long term if you really understand what day trading is then it may so day trading is like a business by yeah. the way investing so and then there is a third category which has like there is some which is like game mm-hmm. right so one is wealth yeah. you're really building wealth so 20 billion dollar people who are build this kind of wealth on grow they are investors mm-hmm. then there are traders a lot of them are very very smart traders like they make money mm-hmm. every day every you know maybe every month and and they are like they treat it like a business they will have pnl mm-hmm. okay this is my investment this is what my profit is or this is my losses and this is what like i look at it objectively mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. nothing is bad but what is important is you understand what you're doing so you're saying day trading is 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 basically like a profession and some people can choose to have and i i know some traders they really do this full time and they pour over all the reports and so on they will have a they at least try to have as much of understanding about a category or a player as the analyst do but for most people who are just getting into investing broad rules to think about debt investment mutual funds direct stocks what percentage of their income they should consider investing like how does let's say i've never ever done any investing and next few years i want to start in you know, building my portfolio you got a long term wealth so how should i just go about it yeah see one thing uh, the beauty is that uh, the moment you put in your money you you have skin in the game yeah and then that makes you understand all these things and then it almost becomes like a rabbit hole you read this then you read this then you 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 know so and then you become like so basically you you don't you won't need kind of to know what to read and what you will find yourself right but just don't kind of get into the step market like you know there are a lot of people who are kind of giving you tips and advices like one simple rule is whoever is giving advice on stocks or mf just stay away from them <laughs> like right yeah. uh second thing is yeah, the people really know they will buy them so <laughs> yeah this is like very very simple uh, logic right uh, if i know there is a, like a 100 bagger out there i mean why wouldn't i just do that <laughs> right second thing is that uh, second beautiful about the percentage of income and so on second thing is that the markets are just so kind of uh so when i started i started with 80 rupees one of my uh wingmates got an internship in one of the listed companies and that was like shocking thing that there's a pub, mm-hmm. there's a listed company and the stock price was 80 rupees and mm-hmm. student you don't have much money mm-hmm. so you you don't need to worry about that you need so if you want to buy real estate for example i don't think you can do it at very very small amounts or so learning is so ma- so market gives you a lot of a ed- uh, lo- lot of kind of options to learn and th- this is one of the thing like you know you start with small amounts and then 
and then you can figure out okay where are you inclined towards how much deep you want to go let's say you can really understand companies okay what does qf do what is it you know how is their uh, how does their pnl look like how will they expand how will they grow what is the management like then you get into individual stock picking if you think no this is i don't have this much time then you pick mutual funds in mutual funds then again you figure out okay uh can i understand about mutual funds who is the fund manager what are the kind of stocks mutual fund is investing in what is the kind of past return right and and the the holdings and expense ratio and and so on like there's if you look at the product page of grow there would be like all these information now if you think that, oh this is interesting then you get into mutual funds if you see oh this is too much then you just think about index funds index funds are what like they just kind of they are no fund like you know there is a market you're betting on the entire market you're indexing on the entire market so if if index does good you will do good there is no stock picking there right if you think you can't understand index fund then you like you know if you have a lot of money then you can hire an advisor uh if you can't afford advisor if you don't understand stocks if you don't want to invest in stocks if you don't want can't understand mutual fund then fd is an option right uh but itna to fir samajhna padega so one is like i think people obviously should consider having some portion of their net worth into public market because and whether it's india or globally i think over a very long term like i think at least when you going all the way up to last 100 years the public market is given on average 10% or so of return so it's given the only thing is it obviously there's ups and downs you know it's not going to be straight line yeah when it's so little bit you may see your principal shrink for a year or two and that's where the patient comes in you know you have to think in really long term i think timing buying a particular stock based on any tip or analysis that one can do but then you have to commit also to learn that much about that yeah. and kind of betting on your skill that you are able to see something what it performs the company yeah. or management team to will do that yeah right and and then you know, probably just any mental model to think about um, different risk categories like direct Excellent. stock is highest yeah. risk versus mutual fund versus yeah. index yeah you know? so in mutual fund also beauty of mutual fund is like mutual fund starts from here like overnight liquid fund overnight fund is like it's like very very safe right and then on the other side there are sectoral funds and small cap funds mm-hmm. which are like if you are investing for an year and if you are saying oh i'll invest in small cap funds it's not a good decision mm-hmm. small cap funds are not bad but they are bad if your investment horizon is like 6 months so any investment product you'll have to think from horizon perspective as well as your risk perspective so small cap funds like in 2008 the micro cap fund went down by i think 60% plus like can you digest that yeah if you can't and also there is difference between risk tolerance and risk cap- cap- capacity yeah. now i in right now when i am talking to you i can say oh i can digest 20% loss in my entire net worth mm. but when that really happens then you behave very differently yeah. our our emotional state our like state of mind is very different so you need to be a, so i think in investing the more aware you are about yourself probably you will be a better investor yeah no 100% i think and Yeah I guess that whole you know, concept of self awareness keeps coming up you know whether about company building what kind of founder you are or you know what kind of constitution you want to write or what kind of investor you want to be so a little bit of you know maybe we can we can talk a bit about that because you know you were sharing with me earlier this this morning before coming here you married meditated for 1 hour now these days you know a lot of people are aware about meditation is good tool we have also talked about that in this podcast but typically most will think okay let me do 10 minute of a guided meditation just just does how does you know why do you meditate does it just just because of your own inner peace does it help you also a better professional better person like so for my thing was very simple like i was like i am just so exposed to data information all the time right and very hyper act like mm-hmm. always need action yeah. and i think I realized that it was hurting my productivity a lot because uh, I think focus is very important and I think getting other uh, like insights are very important like getting real insights and making right decision is very important and for that I think your mind need to be very calm and uh, I think there are various way to keep myself taking a long walk or focusing on few things or doing lesser things or meditating these are the kind of things that 
uh, came to mind and that's how kind of meditation do you think meditation can help someone become a better investor i don't know <laughs> <laughs> maybe i don't know i i think ultimately investment is about making decisions you're absorbing a lot of information like there's a macro information micro information somewhere i mean whether to buy a stock now and let's say stock corrects by 10% whether to sell and exit you know and minimize your loss or hold for next five, five years they're all decisions yeah and somewhere you know whatever makes you a better decision maker and also self aware i think uh, you know some people have as you said you know can't tolerate a correction in their net worth and if you can't tolerate that then anything beyond index fund etc is become very tricky because stock market is correct any time 10 15% it's not a big deal yeah. index funds also can correct index <laughs> relatively less they will correct at the macro level but you know yeah. let's say you're more small cap yeah. etc or more concentrated portfolio the yeah. correction may be much bigger yeah but yeah and if someone is aware that you can't tolerate that then maybe you keep much lesser portion of your um, portfolio in the more volatile yeah so i think i i feel meditation is a universally helpful <laughs> yeah, helpful everything including being a motivation yeah. investor you know i think there was we saw then the 2020 panic right when the market start you know correcting because of pandemic a lot of people completely exited their portfolio in that mm-hmm. panic yeah but you know them sure they're all regretting and came back in the market at much much higher level year down the line yeah but i think uh, just building on what you're saying is even historically the longer period you look at it starts to become more and more stable and predictable so if you look at last 10 year last 20 year last 30 years so that is you know much easier to extra- extrapolate in bigger yeah. chunk of time versus a smaller chunk of time I, i would put it in a slightly different way i would say the probability of losses mm. keeps going down as the holdings go yeah. the, uh, the the probability of loss is very high if it your if your duration is like 2 2 days yeah but if it is very low if it is like 5 years right yeah so i think it may be good practice for people to who are coming to market if you have 100 rupees to invest just give me you know say 10 10 rupees over next 10 months or you just just space it out yeah so that you know instead of worrying about it. and then also as much as possible come in the long term horizon yeah. and have a few year holding period which also helps with the yeah. tax is also lower you know with the and another uh, maybe mental model is like uh, in market specifically if you are doing direct stocks then invest the amount that you can afford to lose mm-hmm. right if you think that okay you are going to need this money for your something in next one year or something like don't risk mm-hmm. like markets are very good teacher but they are also very brutal yeah which you have seen many times right It, it, yeah correct no makes a lot of sense i think you know i guess same applies for early stage investing <laughs> as well <laughs> yeah yeah there so you have to you have to not assume you have to believe ki wo to chala gaya hai kabhi aage ab apis to there's yeah. a bonus but otherwise you know yeah. the, the risk is you know that that much higher these days there's a lot of uh, you know talk and hype and rightly so about you know whatever phrase you want to use you know india century or uh, there's just a lot of genuine excitement which uh, i mean i i moved back to india from us in 2007 even at that time i was excited about india that's why i moved back and kind of my feeling that was that india is you know really starting to take off things were slow to take off but i mean last you know 15 years i never felt this sense of euphoria excitement mm-hmm. that is kind of built up in last couple of years and um, you know i'm you know earlier we were talking about you know how this probably one company in the world which has compounded 25% over 25 year period which is a shocking stat uh to me i was not aware of that but just from india where we sit today you know both from gross point of view if you look at multi decade and your perspective in india you know what is just your big picture thinking about yeah. where we are see um one thing is so on the entire globe i think if there is one country that can compound for next like 50 years and so on that is india and there can be various reasons i don't know about those reasons but mostly people right mm-hmm. young folks demographics is one of the biggest factor digital public infrastructure is another factor the entrepreneurship the tech the our understanding of languages tech yeah. all these I, i mean again we are not experts but some but there is one thing is clear that india it's india is going to grow for next many decades and then um, over that there will be specific business opportunities which will so let's look at financial services now penetration is so low mm. 
right and the rate at which kind of if we continue even then you have a very very long runway mm-hmm. so uh penetration tech these are like two big leverages for us yeah i think that's how i think uh, i try to look at things and don't think too much. I, i mean <laughs> uh, because you don't have any option yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i think even one thing i'm thinking in you know, earlier mentioned something happened in 2016 and thinking say in 2016 our per capita income would have probably crossed 1500 dollars now we are at about 2400 dollars there probably some milestone that you know when the per capita income uh, the gdp crosses certain threshold maybe some new things become you know enabled you know the you know from roti kapda makan to probably other you know quality of mm-hmm. services at some point you know insurance coverage is still very low maybe there's going inflection point of yeah. that maybe you know we'll also hit some of those inflection point over next yeah 5 10 years and if you just believe all the projections that uh, in the i think real term the gdp growth is 6 7% but in nominal terms it's in almost 11 12% yeah and if you look at that you know so probably as we hit 5000 dollars and 10000 dollars maybe you know yeah whole new set of things will you know be yeah. possible in the country so some cities we are already in india so i was in surat last surat is the fastest growing city in the country today yeah and uh, not just surat if you go to tier 2 city like you go to lucknow you go to prayagraj you go to indore you go to uh, and like you know the infrastructure the not mm. digital and physical infrastructure right. is just so good there right yeah. and then uh, people are exposed all the brands are there all the foreign brands are there all everything so you are you your quality of life is as as good and then there are income sources a business self employed there are jobs and everything i think uh there will be hiccups but i think yeah i mean speaking of you know this looking at micro lens of you know let's say i don't know i was rabir surat you know growth number but someone tell me just yesterday that last year up grew by 19% <laughs> and that's you know just a mind boggling level of growth right if they are able to i'm guessing 19% may not be sustainable but even if 10 12% consistently over next 10 years you know will yeah complete transformation yeah, yeah. no i do so i actually we we do this trips to tier so because as i said like bangalore is a bubble mm. right so you need to get out so we, i visited up last year yeah. i visited south india last year this yeah. year we went to gujarat and so on madhya pradesh so we you can see the difference you can feel the difference yeah, and just tell me more like how do you organize these trips because i want to i want a lot more of that i don't do it as much so kaise so, karte so there are two ways one is to very structured program ab india karega go, grow basically where we mm. we have touched like more than 100 cities every wow. week we go to two cities across india mm. but then we founders also we do a like a trip mm. uh, where it's not a, like a fan fair but you go meet some customers go to their houses yeah. go to their shops Mm-hmm. talk to them spend like 4 5 days in these kind of cities so i think the uh, the biggest advantage is that it helps you empathize so you know about the problems like yeah. because data se sab pata chal jata hai customer ko what is the for, but the way you can see their lives right and it's also been a while so i am from a tier 2 very small town which way but it's me it's a khargon it's a madhya pradesh like very small town uh but then it's been 25 years mm-hmm. 20 years i've been in like in bangalore and 5 years at bombay so you kind of tend to kind of forget mm. right uh, this helps you kind of live through those kind of moments again so this is amazing i think you know for all of us who are interested in india i think uh, nothing can come close to you know actually being on the ground yes and absorbing the vibes and people aspirations dreams challenges what's happening but lot is happening in india yeah. is no longer about bangalore and yeah. delhi mumbai yeah and i would recommend to do local stuff like mm. traveling in train traveling local rickshaws mm. or you know roaming around in the local markets like you know so i think that gives you bigger because the hotels and flights they have kind of neutralized everything <laughs> yeah. you go to a hotel you eat the same food right. and you sleep in the same like ac and everything so you don't learn anything but mm. i think to learn you need to get out like you yeah. need to live local i think that's one very interesting kind of learning i had over the last few years I mean, that's I think one thing I'm going to probably borrow and adopt in my life. I think uh, I definitely want to learn a lot more about India. Any mm-hmm. recall any unique insights that stem from or at least strengthening of an insight yeah. from some of these visits? A lot of them. So I think w- w- whenever we come back, we just write down a lot of insights. So I'll tell you a few of very interesting ones. So one thing, one question I ask everybody is, when was the last vacation you had? Mm-hmm. And where did you go? 
कैन यू गेस वेयर डू पीपल गो ऑन वेकेशन इन इंडिया देखो एज ए ग्रोइंग अप आई ग्रो स्मॉल टाउन हरिद्वार हमारे सारे वेकेशन तीर्थ स्थान वाले होते थे यस सो दैट इज नॉट चेंज नाउ अगेन वेन यू कम टू बैंगलोर एंड यू आर गोइंग टू ऑन वेकेशन ऑन लाइक यू नो ऊटी एंड स्टाफ और वॉट एवर लाइक यू नो हिल स्टेशन एंड वॉट नॉट बट मोस्ट फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल इन इंडिया योर वेकेशन इज स्टिल सम टेम्पल और सम यू नो रिलीजियस रिलीजियस प्लेस अनदर शो अनदर थिंग लाइक अगेन I was in so we travel local and I was in an auto and suddenly auto stops and one lady gets in and I was like what is this mm-hmm. and sharing auto is norm is not is not so default is sharing auto Correct. right and then uh, uh, there are some also city flavors lot of mm-hmm. kind of different city flavors different kind of uh, so you you also try to ask question okay what is the origin of this food what is like mm-hmm. you know those kind of things a lot of interesting things as well and some of the smaller towns when you go you do also run into potential the ex- current grow customers or potential grow customer but i'm trying to get to is if you really go to very small town the how is youth from that town thinking or you know participating in the market etc because so a lot of we meet lot of grow customers only like and what we see is again the smartness mm-hmm. and the kind of knowledge that they have like in my time when i was in that small in a very small time i think nobody knew about anything there was no internet like internet was very very rare and we had very local knowledge mm-hmm. but now people are very smart they know how to do business they know how to negotiate for their salaries mm-hmm. they know what is ai what is happening around the world right so the smartness level has go- gone up in spite of like you know tiktoks and uh, sorry uh, insta reels and youtube re- like you know they are lowering some of the but then we don't see the upside hmm. the exposure that people are getting and the i think smartness level is hmm. increasing uh, in in all these cities actually i'm going to get into a little bit of brainstorm mode for 5 minutes i think in this podcast of i would love to tell the stories of tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 towns lot better with so to suggest karo like what's the best way to really capture that you know and um, communicate because otherwise you know the i may end up talking only people you know who are part of bangalore delhi mumbai ecosystem yeah. and who are observing who read a lot perhaps but like how do you bring out the the pulse of you know because in some way if the country of 1.4 billion people need to be india century it is all those towns yeah, yeah hundreds yeah. of them have to participate in that in a bit yeah no very interesting question but one uh, irony uh, all these folks like you are from kanpur right no so i grew up in haridwar haridwar so, right so, so a- almost all the entrepreneurs if you see if you trace back like majority of them are from tier 2 tier 3 mm-hmm. cities so it's just that the time duration they have been out Correct. has been lit little mm-hmm. more but then i think uh, they it's it's not like tier 2 tier 3 is different from tier 1 it's just the kind of ha but after you know 20 25 years you know the thoda ha. context goes away because you got used to it and you get a very filtered information yeah it's like you know it's a since you've been spending time and you've kind of prioritized it grow i'm wondering like do you have any suggestions of ki which kind of people or how to you know really, really what do you observe over the five day spirit five five day trip how to bring them alive on you know Yeah so a few things is, uh, maybe it's a bit controversial and we might have to so one thing is in a city has local liquidity mm. right the way like we are fortunate to have liquidity of entire india like when i when you build your fed it's for india yeah. will grow it's for india but then there is local a city has its own liquidity which is like there will be a big shot doctor there mm. or there is a politician there mm. and so on. i think entire yeah and they will have so much local nuances so yeah. politicians they understand audience yeah. doctors they understand their customers or there would be a big shop local shop yeah. the owner of that shop understands the customer yeah. really really well i think talking to them is like also very very yeah. uh, very helpful yeah you no know, all the, all the cities have the equivalent of those you know there's yeah and then experiencing the local liquidity basically yeah. like i went to baruch and it's a very small town and and what i saw that in the evening there's like you know on the road it's almost like fanfare like in larger cities right jaise paris mein jaise hota hai raste mein seats dal ke khana kha rahe hain aur wo sab ho rahe hain to fir then delhi mein hua fir 
नीचे हुआ इंदौर टाइप्स में हुआ फिर नाउ अब नाउ सिटीज विद लाइक फाइव लैक पॉपुलेशन ऑल्सो हैव इनफ लिक्विडिटी इन हाउस लिक्विडिटी विच दे कैन इन्जॉय लाइफ राइट एंड एक्सपीरियंस गुड क्वालिटी लाइफ राइट एंड दैट इज हैपनिंग नाउ इन स्मॉलर सिटीज राइट सो इट्स लाइक एंड ऑल्सो सींग लाइक ग्रो कस्टमर बेस्ड प्रपोर्शन ऑफ स्मॉलर टाउन्स कंज्यूमर इज इंक्रीजिंग इट्स बीन सेम लाइक आई थिंक इंडिया का जो बेस इफेक्ट है दैट विल ऑलवेज बी देयर लाइक मोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया इज I don't get to mix it. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. At some point, I mean, this inflection point should also come, but maybe we'll take. So, so for com- e-commerce, at least we know now. I mean, and I think when you and I were at Flipkart, almost sixty percent used to be top ten cities. Mm-hmm. Now it is flipped. I think it's you know only about forty. For us, it is very different. So top cities is uh, smaller relative to population. Sure, got it. Now it is so basically in our uh, like two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen. the arbitrage of larger cities was much higher like mm-hmm. information arbitrage internet arbitrage now that has gone down so at least in grow we are seeing it as base effect right. like mm-hmm. uh there is no difference a mm-hmm. uh, person in tier 2 tier 3 cities has the same amount of knowledge same amount of smartness same amount of opportunity mm-hmm. the uh, opportunity may be slightly because liquidity of larger cities is much higher mm-hmm. smaller cities is bit lower but i think If you look at the cost perspective, they are much better. So if you're making like twenty, if you're making like fifty thousand in let's say Baruch, mm-hmm. was fifty thousand in Bangalore, yeah. I think mm-hmm. that's much better. Got it. Got it. Yeah, let as we you know get towards the end of our conversation. I want to just come back to grow. I think from the best of my knowledge, in last you know eight ten years, I think grow is one of the top few companies you know in terms of the scale, profitability. market leadership you know highly differentiated product it's a pretty rare you know my is to get to you know most startups don't get to this you know definitely not in first decade so having gotten here like what are your you know now dreams and aspirations for grow like if you look at next five to 10 and you i know you said like you don't think too much macro long term but i think you like compounding so how do you see you know it's like you know i have not come this far to only come this far mm-hmm. and this is you know the odds of being here is probably minuscule but now that you are here you know what do you want to make out of this so keep compounding like so for us customer trust is the most important thing and we know a few things which are very important so just keep building that and i think we can continue building for like many years in future mm-hmm. and just be try to be lucky like we i mean it's it's was lot of luck right which got us here and we are grateful about that and we hope that that continues and beyond that you can't do much like you keep compounding and also don't get kind of disrupted don't kind of uh don't sleep <laughs> yeah. or, or disturb yourself or I mean, there's other thing you know when you're too successful yeah and the fear is also become very strong so yeah i'm disrupting yeah. yourself i guess yeah and and we are also in business of lot of responsibility mm. it's about people's hard earned money yeah. so we need to be very very conservative as well from that point yeah i do think i think you know as the country grows and the you know per capita income goes from 2500 dollars to 5000 dollars and so on financial inclusion is going to be very big need and i think you know i mean there are obviously some great banks in india uh, with huge offline infrastructure but among the you know new age and digital first company i think grow is up there and i think there's an opportunity to build a like really lasting institution which can you know which it already is but can be in a much much deeper and broader level be you know integral part of all the financial inclusion story in india and i think you are in a great shape to be able to do that so just want to thank you for taking the time you. and having this conversation i think i have enjoyed talking to you from the first day of grow till now uh-huh. whenever you get an opportunity is great to see your growth you know the impact you guys are able to create and uh, is definitely you know, one of the role model companies for a lot of younger entrepreneurs to you know, take inspiration from so keep doing well thank the- you so thank you so much thank you krish At Sparks, we aim to bring to you stories of exponential impact. We share in-depth analysis of what goes behind success stories. If you find our conversations interesting, you can join us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. You can also listen to Sparks on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or any other audio platform of your choice. 
If you have any suggestions on who we should invite or what topics we need to cover, just let us know in the comments. We are always listening, looking for ways to improve and keep getting better as we go along.